Yesterday, you mentioned feeling of helplessness amongst the Muslims due to current uh, oppression in the Muslim lands. You said that we should seek answers in our repentance and supplication to Allah rather than rebel. So how do you explain the hadith, whoever among you sees an evil, remove with your hand, tongue, and heart? Well, that's the point. That hadith is the very point, is that, that it doesn't say, it says, if you're able, فَإِنَ أَسْتَطَعَنْ يُغَيِّرُهُ بِيَدِهِ Right? If he's able to change it with his hand, let him change it with his hand. If he's able to change it, and if he can't do that, then change it with his tongue. If he can't do that, change it with his heart. That's the weakest of iman, but it's still good because al mu'min al qawi khayrun wa ahabu ilallah min al mu'min al da'if wa fi kullin khayr. In both are good. The weak believer and the helpless believer and the strong believer, the strong one is more beloved because he's more beneficial. Right? Ahabukum ilallah anfa'ukum li'iyali. The most Beloved to you with God are the most beneficial. So a mu'min al-qawi is more beneficial than a mu'min al-da'if. Wa fi kullin khair. So that's the point. If you're able to change it with your hand, by all means, change it with your hand. If you're able to change it with your tongue. The hand, they say, our ulama say, the hand is for the sultah. The tongue is for the alim. And the heart is for the ammi, for somebody who's not learned, but he knows it's wrong. So the Prophet is giving... Uh, there's a maqam for each one. So the, if you don't have authority, you can't go and just, uh, you know, get rid of alcohol. In, 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 if, a, if, a, if a Muslim country permits alcohol, and alcohol has been around for centuries. Don't think it's something of late. I mean, the Abbasid period, they had Hawanit and Baghdad. And this is not new. These aren't new things. So don't, you know, this, this kind of, Puritanism that has infected uh, our community is not, it's not, uh, it's a bad sign. I mean, even if you look at the Prophet ﷺ, there was alcohol in Medina. There were people drinking at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. We know that for a fact. They, they got drunk. And there's hadith in al-Bukhari. So, and the Prophet was very gentle with them. Because those type of sins are, are, Far less, I mean, that's a kabira, and I'm not belittling it in any way. But if you want the big sins, the economic sins are, those are the really big ones. Riba, I mean, and Muslims now, they're all, they don't, would never touch alcohol. But riba, you know, it's not a big deal. <laughs> so, you know, we have to do what we're able to do. But we need to strengthen ourselves. And, and that begins with knowledge. There's a bab in al-Bukhari, which is bab al-ilmu qabla al-qawli wal-amal. Knowledge before speaking and acting. You have to learn before you can speak and act. And this is where we have too many activists that haven't studied. And, and we have students also that aren't active. That's true. But I'll tell you something about our religion, and it's very important to keep this in note. Uzla is permitted in our religion. It is absolutely permitted to disengage from the world. It's better not to, because mu'min al-qawi is better than the mu'min al-da'if, but it is permitted. And women aren't even, they have no taklifa in, in uh, activism, none. If they want to be active, that's fine, but they don't have any taklifa. Their taklifa is, is in their home, with their families, with their children. That doesn't mean there weren't sahabiyat that were very active. They were, and there are active women. But women shouldn't have to feel, a lot of women, it's not their nature. They shouldn't have to feel like, oh, I'm not doing anything. If you're raising your children well with, with uh, prophetic values, if you're uh, cooking food with niya and, and with dhikr and and nourishing your family. Those are very important things to be doing. Those women that want to do other things, then, you know, if they have the circumstances and the wherewithal to do that, then that's fine. But it is permitted for people to disengage. And there are many books on this. There are many hadiths that indicate. The Prophet said the best wealth of a person towards the end of time is, is just to go out up into the mountains with some goats. So nobody can say that they can't do that. And so this whole idea that everybody has to be out there doing something, and why aren't you doing something? Okay, tell me what to do. What do you want me to do? You want me to go, go blow up myself? 
Is, it, is this some kind of, you know, enlightened way to deal with our circumstances? Is this really going to benefit us? You know, is this going to further the cause of the ummah? What, what do you want us to do? Seriously, tell me. What do you want? Do we, we go to Syria and fight? For what? Who, what's going to happen when this is over? I don't know. Look at Afghanistan. Look at all those people that fought uh, 40 years ago against the Russians. Now look, what were they fighting for? God knows what. I mean, the Prophet ﷺ told Hudayfa, اعتزل الفرق كلها. He said, if you don't see an imam and a jama'ah, he said, avoid all the sex. He just said, avoid, it's in Sahih Bukhari. He said, اعتزل. That's an amr from the Prophet ﷺ. Go into Uzra. Just avoid all the sectarianism. I mean, there's so much confusion now in the Muslim world. Where's, show me the raya to Islam. What, these, these people in, uh, now, these people in Iraq, we go take bay'ah with uh, somebody who's cutting off the heads of people because they're Shia. When in the history of Islam have our imams cut off uh, people's heads because they were Shia? You show me. When? Show me where in our books it says to kill Shia. They're Muslims. They say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. I, I, I was trained in Sunni tradition and, and that's what I believe. But they're Muslims. I don't believe they're not Muslim. They're Muslims. لَكُمْ مَذْهَبُكُمْ وَلِي مَذْهَبِي They have their way. They were born into it. They were indoctrinated into something. You know, they have an alternate version of events. And in their world, it all makes sense. And if you study that early period, it's very confusing. I mean, Bani Umayyah did horrible things to Ahl al-Bayt. You, you know, you study that. People get confused studying that early period. But there, you know, what is that to cut people's heads off because they're Shia? A'udhu billah. There's many devout, pious people in Iran. You know, seriously, they weep tears. They, you know, they're human beings. And to demonize people is just evil. Even Jews. The whole demonization of Jews is wrong. It's not our tradition. It's not our tradition. There's people in Israel that are totally opposed to this. There's uh, Hasidim that don't even believe in the Zionist state. They're against it. There were Jews living there before the partition. 5%, 6% of, of Palestine was owned by Jews before uh, the, the, the Palestine. They owned 6% of the land. Muslims never forbade Jews from making migration to the Muslim world. And there's periods where they were, where they were treated reasonably well. And then there were other periods where they weren't. I mean, in one of the North African states, the kids used to say to Jews, who's arba? You know, if they saw a Jew, they would say, who's arba? You know, shake four. And the Jew would have to do this little dance for them. It's humiliation. It's not funny. It's humiliation. It's not our religion. Prophet didn't treat people like that. You know, so Muslims need to, we need to think deeply about these things. About our state. You know, we have so much. I mean, we, we, we call the Jews racist and there's racists amongst them. I mean, there's some rabid racists in those settlers, but there's some rabid racists uh, amongst our community as well. You watch some of those khutbahs. If I was a Jew watching a khutbah from some of these guys that they show on memory, we're gonna nadbahuhum dhibhan, narbihim fil bahar, naqturuhum qatra. You know, we're gonna kill every last one of you. And some Jew, you know, these guys are, they, they, their, their ancestors were in the Holocaust. You know, their grandfather, grandmother. So that's a real thing to them. Right? So we're against the Israeli aggression. I'm against it. We're all against it. But there's a lot of Jews that are against it as well. So don't make these blanket statements. All Jews are evil. Quran doesn't do that. Minhum and mu'minun. Amongst them are believers. Wa aktharahum al fasiqun. That's basically true for, about us as well. I mean, you, you know, let's be honest with ourselves. So th this is why, you know, we need a complete transformation in, in, our, in our understanding, in our community. We have to.